الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We always start by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. His entire household. We ask Allah to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. I'm sure you are seated here from quite a while and I'm sure you feel that the heat slightly less than I do, but Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah to bless you all. I'm so humbled by seeing such large numbers sitting uh, so uniformly, mashallah, and perhaps like I was told from quite a while. So forgive me if we have delayed slightly as far as I was sure it was supposed to be immediately after Salat al Isha. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. My brothers and sisters, our hearts are united. We actually love one another for the sake of Allah. I feel it and I hope you do. Because when I see a Muslim brother or sister, I have a feeling in my heart immediately that I share the shahada with this brother or this sister. And that is what is my starting point. And to be honest, this is what we are taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, before I get into anything, I just know that we have a strong bond. The strongest bond I have with you is Shahada. Do you not declare La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do you not declare Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh? Well, so do I. And that makes me a brother of yours and you are a sister of mine. And Subhanallah, I love you for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And do you know what? When we talk about unity, that word unity, we need to try and look at what it means because a lot of us don't even know what it means. Some people think it means we need to think exactly the same, we need to do everything exactly the same, and we need to have everything all together at once. So we must all be under one form of understanding and so on. That's not necessarily correct. In fact, that is not correct. SubhanAllah. You will never ever have two people who think exactly the same. So what is it that unity is all about? Wallahi, if you take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how when he arrived in Medina Munawwara, the people were factions that were fighting each other. But they stopped fighting each other because of the help of Allah. And Allah says, we brought the hearts together. MashaAllah, I wish that happened at the beginning. But don't worry, I'm united with you, my brother. MashaAllah. <laughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we brought the hearts together. And indeed, it is Allah who brought the hearts, their hearts together. If you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had spent the, whatever was in the earth or on the earth to try and bring them together, you would not be able, you would not have been able to do that. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought the hearts together, who brought them together. So they stopped fighting and they stopped swearing each other and they understood that we have something to follow and that is the deen, that is the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah, what is quite clearly understood from that is that we do have this belief in us that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Today we are talking of it within the Ummah, within the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, just forgive me for a minute, yeah, I think this is slightly, it's making me lose my concentration. It's just a fluctuation, up and down, that's, that's what's disturbing. It's not, I don't mind if it's high, I don't mind if it's low. But if it's up and down, it affects me. I'm also just a human like you. But mashallah, brother, I love you still. You know, you're my brother. I don't fight you. I'm not upset with you. Whoever's doing this, mashallah, you're still my best friend. <laughs> so, subhanallah, it's amazing how the hearts, the, the heart is the place where hatred comes from where jealousy comes from, where this ill feeling comes from, sort it out and you will be united in the real sense. And that does not mean you will read Salah the same way, nor does it mean that you will perhaps believe exactly the same 
detail like everybody else. There is room and scope for difference of opinion. You know, the Aimma and the scholars of fit also, they respected each other in a great way, yet they had differences of opinion. The Sahaba of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions had differences of opinion, but they loved each other, they respected each other. Today we have a small difference and we hate each other. Really, we will say, don't even greet this man. I know of a person who spat at me just because I told him, Salaam Alaikum, he spat at me. And I looked at him and I said, Ya Allah, forgive the man. I'm not going to be like that. I actually still care for him. If he were to drop right now and took, I'd be the first one to go and help him. And if he were to lose blood and needed it, and that was my blood time, I perhaps would have donated a pint to him if I was able to. And then he might say, oh, sorry for spitting. But that's what it is. You need to break this trend of hating each other. Hatred for what? We are brothers in the deen. And we have a starting point. I might dislike a deed that you are doing, but you are my brother. Like I say, you might hate a deed, an action. But the reality is, understand this is your brother. Today we have everyone thinks differently. Your children think differently from you. Your brothers and sisters think differently. Your parents think differently. Your uncles and aunts think differently. Your spouse thinks differently. And definitely your in-laws are like far apart. You know that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. But that does not mean we are not united with them. Really, we care for them. We stand up for them. We will not say words that will hurt them. We will not meaning words that will cause a problem. We won't. Words that, you know, insulting, abusive words. No, even if I have a problem and I want to discuss it, I should do so in a very humane way, in a proper, responsible, respectful way. My brother, this is what I see. Now, from what I learned, this is what it is. Please explain to me what you have learned. And word it correctly. You will maintain the dignity of a person and you will be able to understand and discuss, put your viewpoint across, and at the end of the day, they may disagree with you. So what? They disagree. But at least now they know where you stand. A day will come when whoever was really correct, the other will perhaps acknowledge or at least appreciate that particular viewpoint. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So going back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at that time the Aws and Khazraj were fighting and Allah says it was me, it is me, meaning it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought the hearts together. So Point number one, my brothers and sisters make dua to Allah. Ask Allah to bring the hearts together. Ask Allah, Allahumma, ya muqallib al-kulub, tabbit kulubana ala deen. Oh Allah, in whose hands lies the turning of the hearts, make our hearts steadfast upon the deen. Make it steadfast. You know there is a dua. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh Allah, those who have believed before us and those who are believers, don't allow uh, the ill feeling in our hearts to be to, to overtake us. Oh Allah, ill feeling towards them, do not allow it to overtake us because if you allow ill feeling for someone who's a believer to overtake you, then you have a problem, then you have an issue. Then you start swearing, you start disrespecting, you start uttering swiping words and you will cause problems where people start fighting with one another. That's the main thing. So what we want to call for is to stop fighting with one another. Today we have really the ship that is drowning, the ship that is sinking, let's say. And we are still debating and arguing and fighting with each other whether or not we should seal the hole that is causing the water to come in. How foolish. And some are actually saying, don't make a bigger hole. That's what's going on. So we need to understand today we have so many challenges facing us externally. How dare we create internal issues? We will be wiped out completely. There will be no mention of us if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. But it's the favor of Allah that has kept us alight and it kept us going. There are some of us become despondent. You know, I have seen when scholars bicker with each other, you find young people saying, I don't want to go to the masjid anymore. Why? Oh, that imam says, don't listen to the other one. And this one says, that one is this. And that one says, this one is like that. And that's the whole thing we're listening to all the time. Where are those who are presenting something positive for their people? Where are those who are encouraging their people to be better? Where are those who realize the challenges their people are going through and guiding them in a beautiful way to say, listen, come through even if it means inch by inch. Where are they? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and bless us. So if you think unity means you need to think the same, then you are not united with your own spouse, your children and your parents. You don't think the same. And if you think you need to actually be synchronized in every single way and that's what unity means, then you don't even know what it means. But if you understand that unity in reality 
would mean to try your best to obey the instruction of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may peace be upon Him and to understand something important that when you have differences they should be based on something solid and at the same time when someone thinks differently from you do not insult them because insulting will create warfare it will create a heart hatred in it that's what happens once there's hatred in the heart forget about me greeting you my brother i walk in here assalamu alaikum people will say oh, this guy here you think i'm going to reply that salam i don't want who does he think he is i just heard him moments ago insulting me and insulting that one and this one why why do we need to insult people in order to survive if that's the case we believe me we are on the wrong path never did muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam insult in that way never no his heart was so clean that even the enemies of islam he was so mindful of trying to get the beautiful message across to them in a nice way that he tried from the beginning to the end so much so that even when he came into Mecca as a victorious person, the be of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming into Mecca to Mukarramah and he was coming with a huge army into Mecca and he tells the people of Quraysh and these were the enemies. They had usurped, they had killed the Muslimin, they had took, taken their wealth, they did so much in terms of atrocity and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew and if you want to bring the hearts together, then follow the instruction of Allah. What was the instruction of Allah? Well, listen to it. It came in the form of a question Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his people. And he says, Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, O people of Quraysh. You know what you've done, don't you? Yes, you've killed, you've done this, you've done that, you've maimed, you've tortured, you have stolen, you have taken, you have, you have made armies to come and attack, and you've done so much in terms of harm. What do you think I'm going to do to you today? What do you think? Now obviously they know that this is an honored man, he's a beautiful man, he's got a good heart. They know everything, they know that even the wars, he tried his best to avoid them. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried his best to avoid them. But sadly, you know the wealth that was usurped by the people of Mecca and the land that was usurped and the people that were killed and whatever they had done, that this had to come back to the Muslimin. If your house is stolen and you go back to retrieve it, it does not make you a warmonger, it makes you a person who wants justice. So now they said, well, we have good hope, obviously, they have good hope, because obviously you are a good man and you come from a noble family lineage. Now suddenly my lineage is good, isn't it? There was a time when you wanted to fight, so on. But now they know. So what did he say? He says, Go, you are all free today. No retribution. I tell you the same statement that the Prophet Joseph may peace be upon him. Yusuf alayhi salam told his brothers, No retribution upon you today. Nothing. You can go and it's over. That's what it is. How many of us can do that with our own brothers and family members? And you even tell your brother, look, you know what, you have usurped, you took my money, you took my wealth, you cheated me, you made me do this, you made me do that, real things. And you say, but I want to tell you, here's a big hug, you are my brother, I forgive you, it's over, let's start today, a new leaf. Can you even do that? We cannot do it to our own real blood brothers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doing it to Quraysh, those who fought them. That's why he's a Nabi. That's why he's the That's why we have to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him once we hear his name. Because look at the example he laid for us. And this is when people were united. Allah says, Asallahu Ayyajala Bayna Kum wa Bayna Ladina Adaitum Minhum Mawadda. Allah is all capable and all able. And if Allah will, this is what Allah is saying, if Allah wills, obviously. Allah says, Allah will create between you and your enemy, love. How beautifully worded. And Allah says, Allah is all able. He can do that and He will do that. And He did it. Look at Abu Sufyan, the enemy of Islam. And he became a brother in Islam. Look at Khalid ibn Walid, the enemy, who actually was the, one of the leaders of the army in Ohr, which inflicted a lot of damage and harm upon the Muslimin. But it was this forgiveness, it was the purity of the heart. The man came through and says, Oh Messenger, I have a clean heart. And the Messenger obviously had the cleanest of hearts. And his companions had the cleanest of hearts. This is why even when they differed in opinion, they were looked at as a united Ummah. Right. Today, subhanAllah, because I read salah in one way and you read it in another way, for example, 
and suddenly I don't want to greet you. What happened? He said, no, these people are astray. Astray, so okay, there is something. Are you going to greet the man? Are you going to maybe discuss in a beautiful way? Listen, brother, I saw you doing this. You know, how come it was done? He may have an explanation. And sometimes he might not really have an explanation because he's just a layman. And he's following what he has learned. So, if you would like to educate, there is no way you are going to educate through disseminating or should I say through propagating hatred. You won't. You need to propagate the love, the feeling that we have for one another. That's the starting point. Today I want to give you one example. Seated here, we have different colors and different races, different sizes, different inclinations, people following different madhab and so on. MashaAllah, we are brothers, we are sisters. But today, if, for example, something had to happen outside that affected us, say there was a strong wind that blew and we all were being blown off to the side, would it become relevant who you are? No, we would rush to the help of anyone who is affected. Right now, if there was, may Allah protect us all, if there was a huge accident outside the door there, we would rush to help them even if they were non-Muslims. Do you agree? And if you don't, there is a problem. I would, I would stop my talk, cancel it perhaps and go and assist because something big has happened. And I wouldn't ask, brother, you know what, tell me something, are you a gay? I need to know that before I help you. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with me, believe me, I need to help this human being. We rise above issues because of the emergency. And that is what Allah has taught us, to save a life, even of an animal, is of merit. What about a human being? The Quran says you save one life. It didn't speak about a Muslim. You save one life, it is as though you have saved entire humanity. That's what Allah says. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever has saved the life, obviously the, the terminology used, ahya, that would mean to give the life, but the Mufassirin have explained, obviously the giver of life is Allah. Here what is being referred to also is, one who has saved one life, he is as equivalent to a person or similar in reward to he who has saved humanity at large. It shows life is sacred. A man comes with his lifespan. Let him live the lifespan in its full because somewhere through the lifespan he will perhaps get that guidance. Who knows even last minute? You know there are websites that tell you lastminute.com. The reason is some people last minute they decide to do things. May Allah grant us goodness. So with us guidance also a person can be doing bad deeds for many years. There is a hadith which says then right towards the end they do some good deeds and they turn in tawbah and repentance and Allah grants them paradise. Have you heard that? That's a narration. You are nodding your heads which means yes we have. If that is the case, come on. Why do you spit at such a person? Why do you have to start creating hatred against such people? It's not the person, believe me. Sometimes it's an action. I give you one simple example, a drunkard. Say for example, a person has a child, may Allah save God, all of us. And may Allah cure all those who are intoxicant or who are, should I say, hooked onto intoxicants. Believe me, you can't unhook yourself. You can't unhook yourself, but you need to be strong. You know, we don't like the deep. But really we have hope in you, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So what I'm saying, if a person has a child who is addicted onto a drug or onto, for example, alcohol, something intoxicating, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them cure. Say Amin. Amin. I tell you something. That's your child. You love your child. Now you are in a fix because you know you are a parent. So how do you treat the child? Do you start spitting and then beating them up, throwing them out, like it's over? They made, a, they made a mistake, for example, first time they came to you, you talk to them, you engage them in a beautiful discussion. My son, you know what, this is very bad, and so on. It might be your fault because dad, you were never ever there for him, so he, result, he resorted to his friends and so on. They gave him the wrong advice. This is why we say you might need to share the blame as well. But you engage him, you love him, you try with him, you go with him to the hospital, you take him there, you take him there, you somewhere else, you try to rehabilitate him, you give him an another, for example, chance, and a third one, and a fourth one, and you try your best and you spend money. Why? Because he is your son. But what is he doing? He is doing something absolutely unacceptable. Do you spit at him every time? Do you swear him? Do you have this hatred? You are united with a child of yours. In what? In the goodness. But you don't like the bad. But the way you are handling it is such that your unity as a family is intact. It's maintained. You are still part of the family. But we have a big problem in our family and we are dealing with it. That does not make you disunited. And this is why we tell people, 
You know, in the normal day-to-day -day things, when you want to shove your opinion down the throats of the others, you create a feeling in the heart that makes people not want to associate with you at all. And that's what nowadays people term disunity. So you have a home, for example, mother must decide what happens to her daughters in law, all of them. Come on, come on, relax. Mother, you had your days. SubhanAllah, may Allah grant us ease. You want to come for Eid, we are more than happy. But one of the day, one of the years you want to go for Eid to your in-laws, we're not going to call you a salat. They are also human beings. Go for Eid to your in-laws, no problem. May Allah grant us ease. Sometimes they also want to see their daughter, don't they? But some people know. You are a son, you must stand up. You don't know. You can't be a chicken. That's the type of statements we hear. What type of unity do we want in the home? Why do you want to impose your view? Like I know of people who were fighting over breakfast and the time of breakfast. So people say, 6.30, you must all be here. And the daughter-in-law says, but hang on, I don't want to be here at 6.30. No, you must. Okay, what's happening here? Is this Hitler or someone? You know, I don't understand what's going on. Are you like sort of, you know, putting forward something? If that's the case, you're going to have a broken home where everyone is sitting together, but their hearts are far apart. This is why sometimes when you are far apart physically, your hearts are nearer. Have you noticed that? Your son is gone somewhere studying far away, he's married in another country. You don't know why he's there, he might be there running away from you. Never said God. But he's gone far away, married somewhere else, and he phones you every day, Mom, I love you, I care for you, his wife phones you, okay, what are going on? You know, you might Skype with the little kids and you're so happy, but believe me, if you were living together, you would not have managed. You would not have managed sometimes. So this is why I believe that when you give people their freedom, especially in matters of, you know, social living, then each other, your hearts will be closer. But the minute you try to impose what you want, you know, I like to eat, for example, this food, that's it. All of you are going to eat it. You have a problem. They will eat it, but they will just be looking at you all along saying, you know what, we don't even like this person. Behind your back, they will have bad words to say. Hence, the disunity is spread. And when I say that this unity is spread, starting from the core, the core, the home, your own children, your parents, subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May He open our doors. So, it's very important for us to understand that unity is not really to be able to think the same and to be synchronized in every single way, but it is to be able to understand how to live with one another and how to tolerate each other's differences and how to live by them and with them and how to deal with them positively in a, in a way that the person can understand when they are doing wrong that I am doing wrong but this person actually cares for me and therefore it will make them feel like wanting to change it will make them feel like wanting to change whereas if you just rule out the person completely swear them and you have this hatred in your heart for them do you really think they will even want to lend you an ear they won't even want to listen to you why because you are cursing them you have such a hatred that there's no greeting between the two of you and Allah says God us and I want you to change attitudes if there anyone from us who doesn't greet people just because of petties believe me learn to greet that itself is a dua may peace be upon you you could solve your problems. Learn to greet. Even if someone acts funny and doesn't want to greet you, greet them. No problem. And even if someone responds in a very bad way, excuse them. You have something higher that you are standing for. Excuse them. You know, I didn't understand what this meant a few years back. Now we understand. You excuse people for their silly behavior. Because the minute you don't excuse them, to deal with them, you have to become silly as well. Me. A man spits at you, so you spit back. What happened? You did exactly the same. Where did you teach a moral? Where did you promote unity? You actually just fueled the fire. He started the fire and you just added some fuel into it. But if he starts a fire and you just blow it out by your character. I had someone who actually swore me big swear words and I just looked at him and I looked at him at, like a madman and I smiled so broad. He actually said, oh. You know how they say, whatever, you know? Allah protect us. Because he swore me and I just did. And he just looked at him. And he, would he swear again? Well, now he can't. Because you know why? He cannot. The reason is, I'm just smiling. Like what happened to me once as well. I was driving, busy driving. Right now, mashallah, here everything seems to be in order. But I was driving back home, mashallah, in Zimbabwe. And so, I happen to put my indicator. Now, sometimes people are so discourteous that when you put your indicator to change the lane, they intentionally speed up to say, I'm not giving you space. I don't know if you've seen that. 
Yeah. It happens a lot in some countries, not in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. But you saw it. <laughs> so the truth is, put my indicator, we try to turn, and people are quickly rushing. So then I had to make a move because I needed to turn left. So I also decided let's just, you know, uh, barge in slightly and put people in such a corner that they will have to give me way. And this man starts hooting and he started warning and, you know, and he was making fingers and so on and everything was happening. And I'm just so cool. And then he pulls up next to my car and he keeps on, you know, swearing and keeps on and he is in a rage only for a lane change, which would not have even meant 30 seconds delay for him. But that was him. Now, how many of us do it? I think some of us do. To be honest with you, let's be honest. We get so angry. Why? Can't you see I'm driving a better car than yours? You're not supposed to have done that. If you had a big Rolls Royce, I would have stopped, stopped all the traffic behind and said, go forward, my king. They are not protectors. But subhanAllah, so I decided at that time to just look at him and do the trick. You know what's the trick? Smile at him. And I opened my window. So he opened his window thinking he's going to be able to scream and yell. I said, hey, guy, what's happening, man? You all right? And he looks at me and he says, hey, are you okay? I said, I'm fine, man. By the way, thanks for letting me in, man. It was really courteous of you, man. And then he started laughing. And he realized, you know what? I made a crack of myself, a fool of myself. But this is what goes on. And this is when sometimes these little things cause problems because they start a huge issue. And you know what road rage is? It can end in, in killing and a lot of protectors. I know back in South Africa where people have shot at others just because something of this nature happened, you know? And then Allah says, God, if this is the case, where are we? Look at your own heart. And this is why we say, you want to change the world? Well, it starts off by changing yourself. Change your attitude. And you know what? When people swear at you, the best thing you could do is ignore them. And the second best thing you could do is, if you can, engage them in something beautiful. But sometimes they don't want to be engaged at that time. So you excuse them and rise above it by breaking the circle. You know, today we are in an age of technology. So we're trying to learn Islam, aren't we? We're trying to learn how to lead a good life. So now you have, you're just being inspired, mashallah, and you're just, you know, getting a good message and so on. And suddenly you go on Facebook and Twitter and wherever else and you see someone writing a big bad you know article about someone whom you really look up to and they say oh this person is astray and they're like this and that that will happen for every single person you try and benefit from without exception I don't know of one person whom nobody has spoken bad about him or her can I ask you a question you can raise your hand and show me the answer okay I ask you the question listen to the question <coughs> Okay, mashallah. We, yesterday we had a vehicle, today we've got another one. <laughs> SGS 3454B. You need to move your car right now. And guess what? The whole world knows about your vehicle. So, <laughs> subhanAllah, you're so lucky that that car's value has just increased by maybe 100,000. <laughs> but SGS 3454 we, we pray for you, really we do. If you stand up in the middle of us, we'll be so proud of you. <laughs> really. I wish someone can actually stand up. My brother, give you a big hug. You can come right here, right now. I'll first move your car, then you can come back. <laughs> you know, this is something that is really, I'm passionate about. SGS 3454B. My brother, the car we came with, are you sure this is not the car? <laughs> it's not, it's not. It isn't. But whatever it is, don't be sad, inshallah, you. Uh, stand up, mashallah, and uh, you know, walk out. And uh, subhanAllah, you get a prayer from us. May Allah bless you, your family, your offspring. May He ease your issues, may He cleanse your heart. May He, subhanAllah, may He open your doors in every single way. And everyone here has just said, I mean, have a be. Uh-oh, now that's a problem. You know what? Tomorrow people will park their car intentionally to get the May Allah bless us all. My brothers and sisters, that dua is for all of us, even those who are listening to us, and even those who will listen later on. I mean, you know, uh, this is what I mean. The, the way you tell people things sometimes can make them do it, and sometimes can make them freeze. You say, I'm not brave. No matter what happens, they can move that car. I'm too embarrassed to get up. But sometimes you can tell people, you know what? You can get up, inshallah, and we pray for you. What about the prayer? Do you want it? And this is why sometimes you have a person whose car it is not. And he gets up and just looks at everyone. Thank you, man. He <laughs> walks up. Allahu Akbar. May Allah save God. Save Allah Akbar. So getting back to what we were saying, I was asking you a question. 
If nobody has spoken bad about you in your life, raise your hand. I see one hand in the back, mashallah. Subhanallah, you are such a saint, my brother. Nobody has ever spoken bad about you in your entire life. Wow, what a big achievement, mashallah. To be honest with you, maybe he didn't understand exactly what I did. <laughs> Up. MashaAllah, what a brilliant man. We learn from you, inshallah. We take, we, we draw inspiration from you. The bulk of us, 99.999% of us. We have had people who talk bad about us. They have something to say. From a young age, that's Allah's plan. They will say things that are ugly. A test for two categories of people or more. One is for you, two is for them, and three perhaps is for the onlookers. Like myself, for yourselves. Someone says something terrible about you. It's a test for me. Will I believe it or not? It's a test for you. Why have you said it? And it's a test for the onlookers. Will they believe it or not? What will they do? Do they just take it and then mess their lives up? The best thing you could do, just clean your heart. If it is something that does not really directly bother you, forget about it, ignore it. Because you have a real life to live. And forget about living the lives of others. You have your own one life. And number two, if it really does bother you, find out first and make sure if you could not be bothered to find out, believe me, you are not worth worrying about that matter. And sometimes common logic will tell you, you know what, these people are just jealous, or these people are just saying things, or these people are like this and like that. They're just creating this unity. I tell you why. Because when your heart has been opened to this type of gossip in a way that the seed of hatred is sown in it, it is going to grow into a big tree of hatred that will result in real disunity where you won't even be able to look at another person for greed. And it all stems because of a bad statement. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace. That was a pause, a beautiful Singaporean pause. <laughs> you know what that was, mashallah. My little box says Malaysian Airlines. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, as I say, we need to understand the depth of Islam. Islam is a religion that has swept across the globe. Everywhere you go, there are Muslim. But the difficulty is, today we are in an era where amongst us, we have greater issues than anyone from outside can create for us. Why? Because we have stopped looking at each other with the eye of caring, with the eye of genuineness. You need to be genuine. And this is why, go back to the hadith. The Prophet wasallam, he said, Ad-Deenun Nasiha. Ad-Deenun an nasiha The ulama and muhaddithin have said that this hadith is one of the most important hadith in the whole of Islam. And so much so that it has been turned as a quarter of your faith. What is a quarter of your faith? Ad-Deenu An-Nasiha. So some people who don't know the language properly and they don't understand, they say it means religion is to give advice to one another. That's not what it means. No ways. A Muslim does not mean to give advice alone. No. Because then he was asked, Liman Ya Rasulullah, who should we, you know, what is this Nasiha for? For whom is it? And he said, Lillahi. The first thing is for Allah. That doesn't mean you advise Allah. No. So it doesn't mean deen is advice. What does it mean? It means deen is to be to be true, to be true to Allah, to be sincere, to be genuine, to have a love and a care for for Allah to start with. I am true to Allah, so I will not worship anyone but Him. I am true to Allah, so I will learn His names and attributes. I am true to Allah, so I will obey His instruction. I am true to Allah, so I will abstain from prohibition. I am true to Allah, so I will struggle and strive throughout my life to become a better person, whom Allah will love in return as well. That is truthfulness to Allah. Then He says, "Wali Rasuli aw wali kitabi," and truthfulness to His book, which means the Quran. And that is something powerful in this hadith. The term kitab is mentioned before the term rasul. Do you know that? In one of in, in the most in, uh, common narration, Illahi wali kitabi, wali rasuli. That's what he says. So he says, truthfulness to Allah. We spoke about that. Then he says, truthfulness to his book. What is the book? The Quran. How many of us are true to the Quran? I won't ask you to answer the question publicly, but I will ask you some counter questions that you can answer in your own heart. 
Have you ever read the full meaning of the Quran cover to cover? If not, become true to the Quran. Become true to the word of Allah. You still need to read the book. Have you ever tried to understand the Quran cover to cover? If not, become true to the Quran. Don't be false towards the Quran. Be genuine. Acknowledge. Don't only say it's the word of Allah. Acknowledge it is the word of my maker, the one who made me. It is his kalam. It is the most important speech ever, ever, ever. More important than the few minutes we are spending together here this evening. More important than that. Believe me, it's the word of Allah. It is the divine word. You need to learn how to recite it, correct? But as important is to learn its meaning. And what did Allah tell you? You don't even know. And you've led a life, you are now 50 years old, 60 years old. How can we achieve that unity and goodness and purity of the heart, genuineness, truthfulness, and the good feeling? Allah protect us. You need to learn the Quran. You will understand. Then he says, after he says, be true to the Quran, be sincere to the Quran, have a love towards the Quran. He says, وَلِرَسُولِهِ And you need to have that genuine feeling towards the messenger. You need to have the genuine feeling towards the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon him. By doing what? Obey his instructions. Respect him. Honor him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of creation. Believe that he is the last of all Nabi. Understand that his message is a completion of that which Moses and Jesus, may peace be upon them both and all the messengers, came with. Believe that it is the last testament. You understand it is the most authentic book in existence today. I had a man come to me and say, you know what? That's not the book of God. So I told him, okay, you tell me, what is the book of God? Which is the book of God? Is there any book more authentic than this? He said, no. So you can't tell me there's no book of God? He says, I don't know. I said, thank you. That's a good enough answer. Why? Because at least now you changed your tune and your tone from when you started. Because when you started, you said it's not. When you ended a few sentences later, you said, I don't know. Well, that's a big achievement. Do you know that? Because soon you will know. Allahu Akbar. That Allah grant us ease and goodness. So this is why we say that it is the most authentic, the most genuine book on earth, the most widely memorized book Ever, ever. Have you ever thought of that? And I, that, that's a challenge. That's a global challenge. You, you and I know that. The most widely memorized book ever. That's the word of Allah. I have no doubt at all. It's the word of my maker, subhanAllah. But am I true to it? Now I was saying true to the messenger. We love him. But love of the messenger is not just by time. That's the problem. And this is the difficulty we have amongst one another. This unity is caused by lack of genuineness. We say, I love you, but we don't. It happens. You know, people look at you and smile. Salaam alaikum. I said this yesterday. And they're smiling so broad. And you're wondering, oh, this brother, mashallah, mashallah. And you're giving him a genuine hug. And then as you hug him, and the knife comes into your back. What happened here, man? That's what's going on in the Muslim Ummah today, backstabbing. We backstab our own family members, our, our, those in our community, those who attend the same masjid, those who perhaps are around in our own society. We backstab them so badly that when we greet them, we make like we are their long lost bodies. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. Be careful, do not do it to someone else, lest it is done to you. Start the trend of learning to be genuine to one another. You love one another. A person, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was upset, you could see it in his face immediately. He was genuine. When he was happy, you could see it in his face. Description of my beloved, our beloved Muhammad ﷺ, when he was happy, his face lit up as though it was a portion of the moon. Beautiful. SubhanAllah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it's not enough to say I love him. And what we're doing is far away from what he taught. Very far. Very, very far away. We don't not even bother. So people say, oh, the messenger, they are fighting for him, but they don't read salah. Not at all. <coughs> Come on. Be genuine. Fulfill your salah. When you say something, put your money where your mouth is. SubhanAllah. In other words, that means do what you are saying you would like to do. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la tafanun In Surah Saf, Allah says, O you who believe, why do you say that which you don't do? Why? That is a great sin in the eyes of Allah. So we need to change that. We need to be from amongst those who do what we say. If I say something, I love him, then I will do 
And I will prove it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam truly. And if you love him truly, can I tell you what will happen? You become a calm person. Listen to this very important, very, very important point. When you love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam truly and you want to emulate him, you know, fulfill his style and everything that he has done, the way he did it, you become a calm person, very calm. And you, your agitation is put aside. Calm person. So this is why when you get people who only have hatred and they only, you know, spit out venom, which means the words that come out of their mouths are dirty and hard, you must know they are far away from the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu You need to know this, it's a fact. The reason is, he would never ever spit out venom. He would never be abusive. He even said a mu'min, a believer, is not abusive. He does not use insulting words. That's what Muhammad sallallahu said. So we are believers. May Allah forgive us where we have gone wrong. But from today, we don't go wrong, inshallah. We try our best. And if we do fall, then we come quickly back onto the path. That's the way. That is how you achieve this unity. You get the bond in your community. What's the point of talking of the whole world getting together when in our society we don't even want to read salah because this man here, perhaps, you know what? Uh, he does salah a little bit differently from me. What's going on, man? Subhanallah. You read Salah, Allah will accept it. Allah knows. The hadith says, read Salah behind all. You know, the one who is, as the hadith of Rasulullah speaks, if a person is a sinful person, the sin is against him. Your Salah, inshallah, is done. فَإِنْ صَلُّوا وَأَصَابُوا فَلَكُمْ وَلَهُمْ If they have read Salah and it was valid and correct, it is for you and for them. And if they have read Salah and something happened and they were wrong, that wrong is between them and Allah, but your Salah is valid. That's a hadith in Bukhari. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. But people want to spit out dirty words. And these dirty words, do you know what? They are a seed. If you allow them in your heart, it starts growing into a tree. And then you start hating, hating. And this is why they say haters are people who are not happy themselves. They have something wrong in their own lives. You have hatred, there's something wrong with you. Come on. It's about time you understood. We are not saying that you, you should not correct people who are wrong. No! But there is a way of doing things. There is a time and place to do things. And there is a method that you need to understand. The Hadith, the Quran speaks about hikmah. Call towards the path of your Lord with the greatest of wisdom and the most beautiful of speech. Call towards Allah in a beautiful way. You understand the temperament and mindset of the people. Understand the environment. Understand the age. Call them in a beautiful way that they feel like coming towards Allah. Don't just doom people so that they feel we already belong to the devil. We are already citizens of Jahannam. All we're waiting for is the passport. And Allah protect us. But that's how some people make us feel. And believe me, it will happen to all of us. The point I was raising at the beginning is, or a little bit earlier is, that it will happen to every single one of us, where people will attack us, people will say bad things about us. Don't react in the wrong way. React by rising above that matter and issue. You can tackle it in a beautiful way, and if you don't know, remain silent, keep quiet. I'll give you an example. You see when Maryam, Mary, the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon them both, when she was pregnant, obviously this pregnancy was miraculous. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that Jesus, may peace be upon him, was born without a father. He was born miraculously. So when his mother was pregnant and she did not know how to face the people, what did Allah tell us? Allah said, remain silent. Keep quiet. Just point. إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا If someone asks you, someone says something, just say, I'm fasting, I'm not speaking to anyone. That's it. So what happened? She was instructed to point at the child. Allah solved the problem in some way. The same happened to Zechariah, may peace be upon him. When the old man's wife was expecting, he was embarrassed. When he was embarrassed, Allah said, don't speak for three days, just science, that's it. Keep quiet, we solve the problem. But with us, someone says something, and we say two words. They said one word, we reply with two words, double. We created a bigger problem. And then they hate us, and we hate them. You know what? Try this out. I'm going to tell you something that worked with me. Sometimes you have a person who really hates you. Because of ignorance, a lot of the times they don't know you. That's, that's the truth. And sometimes, you know, it might be that they have a misunderstanding, whatever it is. Really hateful. And words are so bad. If 
you have an opportunity to actually meet them and to actually sit with them and talk to them a little bit, they regret it. You know that? They regret. Why? Because you broke it. You broke the ice, number one. And number two is, you prove to them that whatever you were saying is actually wrong. It's actually wrong. So they regret it. It's happened to so many people with me that sometimes people think, you know, what's happening? This guy here, listen, brother, you don't know me. You haven't yet come into my life. You haven't yet interacted with me. How can you do that? If I haven't interacted with you, the first thing I need to know is, brother, I share a shahada with you. I love you. That's it. My sister, you are my sister. I promise you. And I really care for you. And I mean that. SubhanAllah. May Allah bless us. So you talk to a person and you break the ice. It's normal. Man loves to be explained something to. In most cases, if I were to talk to you, even if you have something bad in your heart against me, but I talk to you and I greet you and I give you importance, something will tell you no ways. What I believe is actually wrong, man. This man, you know, he respects me. He gave me so much of importance. And he's actually not, not you know, as bad as I thought he was. And there will come a time when you think, no, he's not even bad. He's an actually a good guy, a decent person. May Allah help us. Because sometimes shaitan, the devil, makes us hate one another for nothing, just so that we can fight each other. Be careful, be careful. So my brothers and sisters, let me give you a few examples very quickly, very quickly. You know, if you take a look at Surah al Allah makes mention of something beautiful in Surah al You know what it is? The ant. The whole Surah is named after the ant. Why? I believe one of the biggest lessons we can learn is the benefit of unity. Unity. Look at the unity of the ants. I want to explain. One small ant noticed Solomon, King Solomon, may peace be upon him, the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam, coming with his entire army. So the ant, what did it do? It didn't say, let me quickly look at my friends and call them out, and the rest of them go to hell. You can die. The ant did not do that. You know what the ant says? It saw this army coming. Immediately it called out, Ya ayyuhannam, udukhulu masakinakum. Oh ants, I'm calling out to all of you. Those who agree with me, those who don't. Those who are my friends, those who don't. Those who might think like me and those who don't. Those who think I'm waffling and telling a tale and those who don't. Everyone, I'm calling out to you. I have a warning to issue all of you. What is it? Enter your homes. Now obviously, if someone tells you, brother, go home now. You want to ask me, but why? Am I right? But sometimes you just have to say, well, why? Before you finish the sentence, he's at home. May Allah protect us. Understand it, but I'm <laughs> so the truth is, the ant is telling the rest of the ants with Kulu Masakinakum. He doesn't wait for the ants to say why. He says, La Yahriman Nakum Sulaiman wa Junhudu, wa hum la yashaun. So that Sulaiman and his army do not trample all over you and they won't even know and realize because you are so small and insignificant, you will be gone. So all of you enter the homes. And Sulaiman, Allah blessed him with the ability to understand that. So immediately he stopped. And he stopped his entire army because of one ant. And he looks back at his army and then he thanks Allah. And he says, oh Allah, I thank you for having given me the ability. So much, so much in terms of gift that you haven't given others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his favor. May he make us from those who appreciate. Sulaiman, may peace be upon him, appreciate him. And we should too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Getting back to the point. So this end, it resulted in such a beautiful, or the result of the statement was so beautiful that the whole army had stopped, the ants were saved, but it is because of the nasiha, of from one end to the other, the genuine feeling, the love, the care, whether we have had differences or not in the past, besides the point, today we have a big army coming to attack, watch out, if I am not bothered about all of you, we're going to all be wiped out, so let's all go, and let's all make sure we are in safety, my brothers and sisters, we are an ummah, where are those who are calling out to us to love one another, to care for one another, to deal with our differences in a humane, respectable way that is actually something that would result in beauty rather than ugliness. We need to learn to love one another in the community, learn to talk to each other, learn to respect, learn to greet. 
learn to respond, learn to message each other when there is an issue and a problem, you have something of importance, message someone. Sometimes a person might send you something that you dislike. If you, are, if you cannot really respond to them because they might not take the, the negative response, first develop a good link with them. I tell you something, if I am close to you, I can tell you, brother, I don't like what you did. If you tell me, hey, thanks, I'm really man, you're happy. Why am I close to you? But if I'm not so close to you and I tell you, brother, what you did is really bad, you might say, who do you think you are? Get lost. <laughs> Why? Because you don't have a link with me. So the, the way to solve that, I will still correct you, but first I need to get close to you. You become my friend. Automatically you know. And then I get close to you and one day I raise you, know, my brother, I, I really love you. You know, but there's one thing I don't understand. This thing that you keep on doing, you know, what is it? Explain it to me, please. And then when he explains it, let him explain it properly. Take it out of his system. And you can explain something you know, the counter matter. Explain it in such a beautiful way that he realizes this has merit. And then he will say, you know what, I really appreciate the fact that you took the time and you actually told me what you did. Like we say, friends, true friends are those who tell you and advise you and guide you even when it is better. But not those who cheer you all the way to the slaughterhouse. No ways. And Allah says, God us. So my brothers and sisters, learn from the end. Take a look at something else in the same surah. Allah speaks of anhar, you know, the, the lakes and the rivers that flow and so on. And Allah speaks of the mounts, the mountains in the same surah, surah to Naman. Both of these have something in common. What is it? They appear huge to us. Look at the ocean. It appears massive, powerful to me and you. But it's made of particles of H2O. Do you know that? Singularly, evaporate. Together, whoa, they can cause disaster and they can even make us, inshallah, go, go out on our jet skis by the will of Allah. And I enjoy that, believe me. Inshallah, go out on your jet ski. They say you must bend your knees so that you don't feel me. Inshallah, they know, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Beautiful ocean, if it wasn't for that, where would we go out jet skiing? SubhanAllah. What, in your bathroom? Then Allah protect us. <laughs> so, Droplets of it mean nothing, but the whole ocean means something powerful. The same applies to the mountains. It's made up of sand particles. Dust particles together with sand particles and whatever else. And they come together, they bond so much that it actually becomes rock formation sometimes. But those are little particles together, they bond them. Wow, what a big mountain. But imagine, if each one of those particles say, hey guy, I don't like the way you read Salah, I don't like the way this, or you know, you, 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 I don't like this and that. Wallahi, they would be, this whole world would be full of dust and there would be no mountains. Because no, no one particle would want to gel with the other. The same applies to the Ummah. The Ummah is such, we have an immense and intense force when we are together. A beautiful, good force. A force that would promote goodness. But when we are separated, when something happens to one of us, believe me, the rest of us will cheer the person on to say, yes, fix it just as well. Is that what it's all about? Where is the lesson of unity? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us ease. May we be united, my brothers and sisters, forget about selfishness and forget about being your own man. Sometimes you need to give up your little opinions in order to promote that goodness amongst us, especially when it comes to that which is quite irrelevant. A lot of us fight over small petty things which are not even important. Not even important, believe me. So let's understand, each one of us should promise to look into his or her heart, to find where shaitan has crept in to develop hatred against my fellow brothers and sisters. Where? And take it out. There was one sahabi, one companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when the Prophet sallallahu described him as being a person of Jannah, they went ahead to ask him, hey, what is it? What is it that you are doing? The Prophet said, you are one from paradise. And he says, well, every evening before I recline, I make sure that I clean my heart so it has no ill feeling against any of my brothers and sisters. I just take it out and I sleep happily. Try it. It is not so difficult. Try it. Try it. I know there are people who have really wronged us. Myself and yourselves included. People who have oppressed us in a big way. I know, I know, it's happened to me too. If I were to tell you, you'd probably be shocked out of your skin. But you need to rise above it. You want to lead a happy life? Just say, SubhanAllah, Ya Allah, that's it. I forgive them. It's over, it's gone. It's over. You will be such a content person. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us content. 
May he help me, and may he help all of you, and may he help this ummah at least to come together. Like we say, understand the meaning of unity. It does not mean you're going to think the same. It does not mean your actions are going to be the same. No, it actually means you won't be having a genuine feeling for one another. I haven't even completed the hadith. The hadith continues, that same hadith of Nasiha, it says you have a genuine feeling and a love towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the messenger, and I've explained by following him, by understanding, and so on and so forth. And then he says, And for the leaders and for those who are the layman, the public, leaders of the Muslimin, we're talking of a'imma, that it has deep meaning in it. But even if we take, for example, those who lead us in society and community, you need to have a care for them. You need to have a genuine feeling for them. You need to be able to love them. When they do something wrong, there is a way to correct them. You don't just become violent and start promoting things. Like I said yesterday, and I'm repeating it today, a person who rushes to Facebook in order to mention what bad was done by someone sometimes really wants to disgrace them rather than correct them. Sometimes just wants to create a big hoo-ha rather than correct them. So the first step, if you are genuine, you need to go to the person, correct them nicely. Like I say, develop a relationship with someone, then you'll be able to make a relation that will become such that they accept it from you the minute you talk to them. You don't even want to have a relation. Brother, I won't greet you, spit at you, and at the same time, I want you to accept what I say. Come on. Which world are you living in, man? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And may He correct us all, myself included. So this is the genuine feeling we should be having, even for one another. I need to learn to appreciate you, and you need to appreciate myself. And we appreciate each other. If I've said something wrong, if I've made a mistake, correct me. And sometimes we may differ in opinion, that does not make me a bad person, nor you. But it, we will understand, I have a care for this person, I genuinely feel for them. And I would like to reach out to them in a positive way. So then you reach out to me, I reach out to you. And that's how we can develop and grow. Like I said, treat me as a child of yours or a brother. SubhanAllah. And use the abilities Allah has given you to help me, and I will do the same to you. Today I am here. You are all my brothers, my sisters, you know, fit to be my fathers in some cases, and my children in some. And that's why we are here. And we know the crises, we know the challenges the globe has, the fast life out there. We know everything that's happening, or a lot of what's going on on the globe. And together with that, it's not easy to live as a Muslim. And that's why we are here to help one another. Hold my hand, I hold yours together. We are an ummah, and we move forward. We know that it's so challenging where you work and whatever else you might be doing. You might be going through so many issues, and a lot of times we do things that we know are not exactly ideal, but we want in our hearts to actually become better people. So Alhamdulillah, that's what I'm trying. And I know you're trying, so I will not just judge you and say, right guy, you're a terrible person because you know what? You work across the road and there's only is working with you. Come on. The same man who says that when he went into the chemist, he was busy checking up a lady who hardly wore anything. Then he was okay. He tells you that's because I was sick. Come on, wake up. We are all trying our best to live a beautiful life and we are living a real life at the same time we want to please Allah. We are trying. That's why I say, hold my hand, I hold yours and together we're going to paradise. My brothers, I just want to briefly say I really appreciate the fact my sisters as well that you've come from so long. You've sat very silently. I spoke for one whole hour. One whole hour. And please pray for me. I pray for you. There is Rahma and Sakina mm -hmm. that descends any crowd that comes in order to listen to a Tadja, something to do with Allah and His Messenger, a good message. I hope I've presented a good positive message. Uh, like I say, I may not be able to greet everyone and to shake hands. Uh, also, you know, what is impossible is to be able to little, take little photos and so on, believe me, as much as we would love to make everyone you know, feel happy and so on, believe me, you are very important to me, all of you, including my beloved brother at the back there, <laughs> and, and, and to be very frank, I am draw, drawing inspiration from you just by looking at you from a distance here, subhanAllah. Don't be surprised if I find my way to you somehow. But to be honest, as much as we want, you know, I, I'm witnessing my brothers, my sisters, 
uh, you will have to excuse me, I'm drenched, as though I was swimming. I do the Malaysian Airlines, if you know. So, basically, mashallah, I will need to disappear, inshallah, from the back door. By, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't like to do this, but I think you can excuse me. And inshallah, I, I, I pray for you. May you have not only a blessed evening, but may your life change. And may it change for the good. And may my life change, change for the good, inshallah. May we look at life from a new angle. From an angle that is full of hope, of love of one another. The angle that makes me feel that I'm part of the Ummah. And that is what, of, what is of importance. Like I say, why do you want to shake the hand of someone when you are not shaken by the message? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be shaken by the message, inshallah. And may Allah forgive me for all my shortcomings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.